Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about static equilibrium. Alright, so an object that is in equilibrium is an object that is not accelerating. So something like a building is the most common application of this. So anything that would be sitting still, uh, it's not going to be changing velocity, it has no velocity, uh, is obviously going to have zero acceleration, uh, and so therefore it is in static equilibrium something that moves very slowly. So over here we've got an example of a crane. Uh, the crane is going to be moving rather slowly uh, and the static forces that are applied to this are going to be much uh, more um, relevant to the situation. Uh, sometimes we'll call this something like quasi-equilibrium. So it's moving slow enough that uh, we're going to treat it like it's in equilibrium or it's at least close to that. Uh, and then finally, if we have something that is maintaining a constant velocity, so this truck, for example, say it is maintaining a constant speed uh, and the constant direction uh, in its travel. So if it is maintaining a constant velocity, uh, it has zero acceleration. Uh, this truck is not in static equilibrium because it's moving, uh, but it is in equilibrium and we could uh, apply our equilibrium equations like we would for the building or for the crane. So an object that is accelerating is changing speed or changing direction. So you do want to be careful with this. Uh, so an example of something that's not in equilibrium would be uh, a baseball. So imagine we take a baseball, we throw it straight up in the air, uh, and at the very top point it's going to have zero velocity. Uh, so it's going up, it comes to a stop just for a moment, and then starts going back down. So the moment before that, it has an upward velocity. The moment after that, it has a downward velocity. So even though it has zero speed uh, at that point and zero velocity at that top point, uh, the acceleration is still not zero because the velocity is changing uh, as it goes up and consequently down. Um, so this is an object that is not in static equilibrium and we would not be able to apply the equilibrium equations to it. Another example of something that is not in equilibrium would be a merry-go-round. Uh, so our truck was maintaining a constant speed and a constant direction. This merry-go-round is maintaining a constant speed, but not a constant direction. Uh, so if something is changing direction, it is changing velocity. If it's changing velocity, it has an acceleration. And if it has an acceleration, it is not in static equilibrium. All right, so now that we've established what's in equilibrium, what's not, let's talk about analyzing bodies in equilibrium. So let's go back to our crane. Our crane was in quasi-equilibrium. It's moving slow enough that we're going to uh, make the assumption that it's in equilibrium. So when I analyze bodies in equilibrium, generally I'm going to uh, be looking for uh, the forces. So if I'm looking at the arm of the crane, I'm looking for these tension forces in the cable, and I'm looking for the supporting forces down there at the bottom. Uh, if I want to find those, I would go through the, the following process. I'd start with a free body diagram. So I'd draw the arm of my crane, get rid of the background. I'm going to draw in the forces that I am uh, looking at or looking for. Uh, so these may be known or unknown values. Uh, and generally, if a body's in equilibrium, uh, we start with Newton's second law, F equals MA. We establish that our acceleration was equal to zero which means that our forces need to be equal to zero. Uh, some important details with this. So it is the forces are equal to zero, uh, really the sum of all the forces. So the net force on the object is zero. So we need to add all of those forces together and they need to add up to zero. And we also need to note that this, uh, these forces are vectors. Uh, so it's the sum of the force vectors that needs to be equal to zero. So if I jump back to my free body diagram, how you add force vectors graphically is you put them all tip to tail. And so if I were to take these forces and kind of rearrange them, uh, move that one down there, move this one up here, move this one up here, uh, the force vectors are going to form a loop. They're going to go back to their original point. Uh, and that's how we know that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. We'll talk more about how we actually mathematically solve for this uh, in later pages, uh, but this is the general process we're going to be using. So the general process again, use images of the problem to create the free body diagram. We're going to use those free body diagrams to write out our equilibrium equations, which we'll talk more about later. 
Uh, and then we're going to solve those equations to find the magnitude and direction of some unknown forces. All right, that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.